time, 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 too much time, you're wasting more time. But I feel like this could be an interesting idea. No one stops you from putting Brussels sprouts in lasagna. It happens to me every day. So <sighs> ready? Yeah, right. Hello everyone, my name is Catherine and I'm a professional cook. Today you can find me in a little bit of a different setup. I just feel like it will be a little more comfortable for me. I hope my laptop doesn't bother anyone because that's where I keep my notes about the information I want to talk about in a certain video and I look at it sometimes. Today I have a very interesting topic. I've been working on it for a while and again I say that about every other video but that's actually true. And in today's video I would like to share a few mise en place tips that I use in my home kitchen as well as my professional kitchen. In general, mise en place normally belongs in a professional kitchen and I think home cooks can also apply it while cooking at home, obviously. It helps you to be efficient, work fast, clean and save time and money. And who wouldn't want that, right? Introducing mise en place to your home kitchen will help you to stay more organized, be more efficient and just maybe have a little less stress about cooking at home. And the idea to film this video came from filming last video because I saw that there are still a lot of information that I didn't talk about. There are a lot of parts that I cut out because they were taking too much time and I decided just to put them all in this video. And again, you all know the video will pop up somewhere around. <laughs> you know how it works. And the first topic I would like to discuss is planning. Again, I mentioned it in a previous video, but I would actually like to tell you how I see meal planning in my kitchen and I feel like it's a really efficient way if you want to introduce it to your kitchen. And basically all the meals that I cook at home, they consist of four parts. Protein, carbs, vegetables and garnish. And of course some of the parts might be missing, especially garnish. I don't have those at home all the time. But in general, I always try to think of all those four parts when I think of a complete dish. And actually, garnish is what adds a final touch and brings dish to another level sometimes. But I'm getting ahead of myself, we're gonna talk about it in just a little bit. The most popular example of carbs could be bread, rice, pasta, noodles, and grains, which include barley, rye, and maybe oats. And of course, the list can go on, but these are just a few examples that I could give you. And the most popular examples of proteins could be beef, poultry, all sorts of poultry, not only chicken, duck for example, or turkey, uh, lamb, pork, fish and seafood, and tofu. There are so many more options. It's just, I decided to choose a few examples so you could see the principle and this idea that I base on. It depends on a dish and we will talk about it a little bit later. I like presenting information in tables or diagrams and while I was preparing for this video I came up with this table that you will see on the screen right about now. On your left hand side you can see the most popular carbs that I just decided to put in this table and on the top row you can see the most popular proteins that I normally use and they just came up to my mind. And if you match those rows and columns, you will see dishes that I just came up with and put them in this table. And I feel like this could be an interesting idea to think about the dishes of your own variations, your most popular dishes that you cook, or your most favorite ones. Or maybe you would like to try something out and you basically you fill up this table and you see where you have a lot of dishes where you don't have that much and maybe you would like to experiment with some of them a little more. It will just broaden your mind, make you a little bit more creative and of course we all have those three, four dishes that we constantly cook. For me, it could be quinoa bowl with some chicken and all sorts of different toppings. Then it's a chicken soup. I love a good chicken soup spiced with like ginger and cinnamon and cloves. I also like making all sorts of stir fries just because it's so easy to keep them. For example, soup and stir fry is so easy to make. Or, oh my God, Thai curry. One of the <laughs> best things and the one of my most favorite things that I cook at home. And I know how it feels like when you have 
only four dishes in your mind and you don't have time thinking about what you would want to cook next but just taking a moment one day taking an hour and writing down the dishes that you like that you would want to try something easy again everyday cooking doesn't require things to be difficult um, and maybe this table could be a good inspiration for you and i would actually recommend you using it if you would like to have a little bit of a perspective on your cooking and that's how I basically plan. It always happens to me that I have a whole bunch of eggs, but I've been eating poached eggs over the past one month. I'm just so tired, but I have this tomato sauce in my cupboard and some bell peppers. I can make some shakshuka for breakfast instead. That's what I'm talking about. Just looking at your ingredients in a different way. I decided not to put vegetables in this table because it all depends on the mood, I would say, especially when it comes to stir fry. I don't know, maybe you don't feel like eating vegetables. For example, I have this dish, salmon steak, salmon steak with carbonara. Or for example, lasagna, normally you we don't put any other vegetables rather than mirepoix, carrots, onions, and celery. But again, no one stops you from putting Brussels sprouts in lasagna. Call me crazy, but you can always adapt any dish according to your wants and needs. And obviously you didn't put garnish because it all depends on a dish as well. It was too specific. And from having a dish already in this table, you can come up with garnish that you want that day specifically. It can be scallions or some types of herbs or peanuts for example uh, with pad thai that would be roasted peanuts or if we talk about one of my favorite soup borscht it would be sour cream and parsley and dill <laughs> so i hope you understand my concept and i hope i can get you inspired to think about new dishes that you can come up with and this planning idea could work especially well with ingredients that are just stuck in your cupboard and you don't know how to use so you just kind of force yourself into using them the next thing i would like to talk about is make sure you have all the ingredients first before you start cooking it happened to me a, a few times that i started making honey cake and i realized i don't have enough flour so Again, it comes to a planning thing. I would like to talk about it separate. But of course, it happens to everyone that we forget a few ingredients sometimes or we write a list of things, like to buy a list before going to a supermarket and one thing just slips out of our minds. It always happens. Just what I'm trying to say is before starting to cook, make sure you have everything. And funny enough, it happens in a professional kitchen a lot of times that someone forgot to order something or uh, someone didn't plan perfectly cooking a big batch of some kind of soup. It happens to everyone. <laughs> the next tip I called no clutter. Keep your station clean. For me, it's normally my knives, a cutting board, a towel, a small bin and a scale if I'm baking something or in general, if I need it. And it is a very essential tip to working in a professional kitchen. Not as much in a home kitchen, but in general, if you start implementing this tip at home, I feel like, it, first of all, setting up your station every time in a certain way can get you into mood of cooking and it will just help you to move freely. And you know, just having this nice cutting board that won't move around, a sharp knife, a scale that you like using, all that, all those small, small details will help you to cook with much more pleasure and paying attention actually to those details and what makes you work better and what makes you get inspired and just enjoy the process. And in general, actually in home, cooking it's mostly about just enjoying the process more and thinking of it not as a routine because I know that home cooking can get really tedious and I've been there especially these days my inspiration has been gone and as much as I would try to create something it hasn't really been happening but I'm still enjoying the process of cooking and you can enjoy more as well if you pay attention to those details. My next tip would be prep and weigh all the ingredients before starting a cooking process. Like this you will be able to concentrate on cooking better, there will be less mess and it will be actually faster. Although yes, that's true, it seems like you're wasting more time like this, but since you're concentrating on what you're doing exactly, it will save you a lot of time. Of course there are times when you can cook 
and chop at the same time but just try it a few times and you will see how much more relaxed you will feel that you won't have two stove tops working while you still and like your pan is already hot but your onions are still not even peeled you know what i mean and when i do this at home i you know i imagine that i'm a chef on a tv show and you know how all of them have these pretty little bowls of I don't know, a pinch of salt. Of course, I normally don't go that far. If you feel like being a little fancy that evening, of course you can. A lot of those uh, chefs on TV shows, they prepare all the ingredients in advance to save time on a show, obviously. But in reality, that's how cooks do in a professional kitchen, because it's much easier to chop all of the vegetables first and then cook them rather than chop one and cook one. Chop the second and while the first one is already burning so it's just like this you will introduce the system which will help you to save time there will be less cleanup to do as well and this trick kind of puts you together and just makes you more organized and straight to the point point. and the more you do that the more you will notice when you can prep and cook at the same time and when you really cannot and in a professional kitchen i always pay attention to how people cook how organized they are. If they know how exactly to set up their station, that's how you can tell if it's a good cook or maybe they will still need some improving here and there. The next tip is one step at a time. It sort of goes together with my last trick that I was talking about, but this one is a little bit more specific. For example, if I'm cooking carrots, then I would peel and trim all of them first, then cut all of them, set them aside. If I have a whole bunch of onions, again, I would peel all of them, and then cut all of them in half and then cut all of them in cubes. It's one of the most important tricks that I learned in the kitchen. It saves the most time. Or for example, if you're making six to-go salads, again, <laughs> happens to me every day. If I'm making six salads, which are exactly the same, first I would put the lettuce, then I would put one topping, topping, <laughs> then I put one topping, then another one, and then I would close all of them. So, you know, it just helps you to be in the flow. And if you don't really like spending that much time in the kitchen, finding ways to save time here and there without affecting the quality of the final product is very important for you. And efficiency is something I would recommend you to work on. Next tip is clean as you go. Sometimes we don't want to start cooking because you know how much you will have to clean in the end, but cleaning as you go saves you a little bit of time that's true but mostly it just saves you this mental energy that you spend in the end cleaning all of the mess for so for example if i have one dirty pan and i still have my soup cooking i will wash it really quick or for example if i had all of those small bowls with my ingredients and i got rid of all of them then i will wash them quickly and like this in the end after I'm done with my meal, I will just have to wash maybe one pot and a few plates. That's it. The seventh tip would be avoid cross-contamination. It is a very important one and sometimes we forget about it in home cooking. In a professional kitchen, it's very important and all those inspections that happen regularly stress everyone out. It's so important that we do that, especially when working with proteins, fish and seafood because they have dangerous bacteria. Of course, washing all the salad, especially romaine or celery roots or leeks is also very important to remove all of the dirt and avoiding getting it to a clean cutting board is also very important. And I have at home only one cutting board. Every time I prep my proteins first, like this, I wash all the area, my cutting board and my knife especially, and my hands obviously. Just keep it in mind when you work with proteins. And the last tip I would like to talk to you about without my laptop at this time is just to enjoy the cooking process. Don't forget about it. Cooking is so great. It can be a great hobby. It's a delicious hobby as well. Learning new techniques, new flavors, new ingredients can be so exciting. People who love cooking, I think you understand me. So just don't forget about it, even during the tough days when you're so busy and you just don't know what to cook and you don't have that much time. So I hope this video was interesting for you. I hope you learned something new and you found it useful. Please share with me 
what was the most interesting fact and tip that you learned during this video and do you actually think that planning is important in home cooking i'm just curious if you plan your meals in any way subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of my videos and i'll see you next time bye